Okay. Assalamu alaikum. This is Anjum Anwar, UCTV community platform. And we welcome Sheikh Dawki today. Um, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, the, uh, I just have to say, Sheikh, that the background looks so peaceful. Is that uh, is that re in reality? It's it's a real background. It, I I normally record somewhere else, but the room I wanted it's a bit busy at the moment, so I've, ha I've come into the conservatory. <laughs> no, no, this looks beautiful. Unfortunately, Mashallah. what we have to dis discuss is far from uh, beautiful or calm. And I wondered if you can just help our audience to understand exactly what is happening on the ground in Palestine, of course, Gaza, but also uh, Sheikh Jarrah, what has been happening there. If just give some background. Yeah, I mean, this started after the Second World War. In fact, this started, you know, a couple of thousand years ago, to be honest. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran about the children of Israel, Bani Israel, and how they've always wanted uh, their sort of homeland. And this has uh, proven to be a, a reality now in our lifetimes after the Second World War, after the persecution and, you know, what happened in the Second World War, where the Muslims in Palestine welcomed the Jewish refugees with open arms. And unfortunately, the extremists, uh, uh, the extremist Jews took over, the Zionists, supported by Western governments, and they, they just using them as a political pawn, to be honest, and us as political pawns. And then they established the State of Israel, and the Muslim uh, armies and countries were too weak to respond. And ever since then, the uh, Israeli government, successive governments, have gradually taken over more and more land and are continuing to, continuing to expel Palestinians from their homeland and demonizing them and eliminating them, stealing their properties. I mean, literally stealing them, kicking them out with force, backed by the army, backed by the judicial the judiciary system, backed by the United States backed by, you know, most Western democracies and uh, receiving silence from the Muslim governments. Mm -hmm. So it's a slow, it's a slow genocide, actually, as well as a slow uh, ethnic cleansing policy. And it's a slow um, stealing and theft of land for which, let's be honest, they have no legitimate legal basis for. You, you you can quote whatever book you want and say, this land belongs to me, look, I've got this book. Well, I'm sorry, we don't recognise, most of the world doesn't recognise the book. It's just, it's just a narrative. You're trying to fool us and you are, you know, fooling uh, some people. But, you know, we're not stupid. The world isn't stupid. And everybody can see what's going on. And for the time being, they have the support, they have the backing, they have the huge military might in, in that small area. They have even nuclear weapons. So, you know, this is a reality and everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows why it's going on. Everybody can see how it's going on. These people are worse than Saddam Hussein. They're worse than Gaddafi. They're worse than Pol Pot. You know, they should choose all the leaders who, whom we have seen and, and called them out as evil and re required regime change. And we have these people right in front of us. The only difference is they have the full backing of a number of powerful Western governments. Fast forward, Sheikh. Um, I mean, there are millions of questions uh, in my head at the moment. But if we come fast forward, what ignited the latest uh, situation in Gaza? Well, you know, Gaza is surrounded by... Uh, uh, fences and uh, controls and, you know, guard, armed guards. People can't go in easily. People can't go out. Israel controls the water, electricity. They control everything. And everything that comes into Gaza has effectively to be smuggled in somehow. So, you know, people are actually, they're, they're starving for food. I get texts from people, we have got no, during Ramadan, we have got no food for iftari, for suhoor. Our children are crying of hunger. You know, all this is happening right in front of the world. Even the, the uh, charities are struggling in Gaza. 
So what what ignited this latest episode and every few years it ignites is people are fed up. They've had enough. How much how much can a subjugated and a uh, an open prison population in an open prison? How much can you take? There has to be a reaction. Ultimately, if you humiliate somebody and starve them and and, and try and destroy their humanity, don't even recognize them as human, something will happen. Now. Many most people will just die quietly, but I'm I'm sorry if you got iman, you're going to raise your voice. You're going to say something. This is a natural reaction. You know, we we don't have to look very far in history. The Second World War happened because the Germans. One of the reasons the Germans were humiliated, so they they created a pride, and and the pride extended to the Aryan race, and everybody was you know less than them. But this is uh, this is survival now. It's not. It's more than you know humiliation and, and demonization. It's is survival. What what else can they do? And how dare people just watch and say nothing? How dare Western governments support this and say nothing and blame the reaction of a, a subjugated, humiliated, and controlled population who have got nowhere else to turn? So this is this is what's happened. They got fed up and they're fighting back. We, we, we seem to be pointing uh, to the Western government, but from my understanding is the Western government's aims and objective is to uphold the Zionist regime, and they're delivering on that. I think that the, the important question for me would be, these people happen to be part of our ummah. You know, uh, they're Muslims, they're part of our ummah, and for the past 17 years, we have been watching um, uh, the land slowly being eaten away. And yet, we have not seen any um, Islamic state um, or perceived Islamic state to say, okay, enough is enough. This, we, we will not allow that to happen. Should we be looking within ourselves? Because I mean, I have not seen that kind of outrage that one would expect if that if the situation had been reversed. I mean, if you uh, if you look at what happened after 9/11, the two buildings that were blown up, the the retaliation in Iraq was complete destruction, and here you have a community which is incarcerated in the largest jail on the planet. So where are the Muslims? I think that my question would be, where are where is the Muslim leadership? Just, just to comment on one thing you said, that the, the Twin Towers, destruction of the Twin Towers, mm. actually had nothing to do with Iraq, as, as we know. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, but, but they decided to destroy Iraq because absolutely. Iraq was a was a military threat in the area. Yep. Um, and, and that's what's happening, actually. Uh, when you say we have to look into ourselves, you're absolutely right. And the leaders have to look into themselves. And unfortunately, they're not looking into themselves. They are, they are powerless. They feel powerless. The Iman is extremely weak. And uh, there's no unity. They, their Qibla, I'm sorry to say this, but their Qibla doesn't seem to be towards the Gaba. Mm. seems to be towards Washington. Mm. I mean, th- this is the pr- I think this is a fundamental problem. Uh, I, I think that the first woman, woman uh, president or uh, prime minister of Israel, Golda, uh, whatever her name Mir- was, Mir- she, Golda Mirson. That that's right. Yeah. She said yeah. when when they uh, took over Al Aqsa for a short period, that night she couldn't sleep. Mm-hmm. She was waiting for the Muslim response, and when it didn't come, she said, "I knew then we would be victorious." Mm-hmm. And this is a, this is a reality. The iman, the enthusiasm, the jazba, the 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 uh, um, the love for the ummah, it seems to have uh, become so weak now, and so pathetic now, that we have allowed our countries to be uh, our leaders of our countries to be donkeys. Let's be honest, donkeys supported by uh, the Western governments, and when the leader does speak out, he's killed. Mm-hmm. Or his country's taken over. I don't have to. I, I'll, I'll quote King Faisal. Allah bless him. Mm-hmm. And he, he stopped selling oil mm-hmm. to the West. Can you believe that? Because yeah. <laughs> he said, he said uh, a barrel of Pepsi 
is uh, is uh, a barrel of oil is cheaper than a barrel of Pepsi. And he goes, this is not right. So he stopped the oil and within one year he was dead. You see? So, so this is what's going on. This is what's happening. Um, the leaders, they, 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 they're scared. They, they love their dunya too much. And, and this is wrong. I mean, now some leadership is coming out and they're promoting Islam a little bit, alhamdulillah. And that should be encouraged by, by us and by the population because there are almost 2 billion Muslims. It's the biggest religion in, in the world. And this is what Western governments fear. They fear Islam. They fear political Islam. And there's no need to fear it unless you're, be, you're being unjust or unless you're being cruel. If you're being unjust and cruel, yes, you have something to fear because Muslims can't be bought. Good Muslims can't be bought. All the other religions, religions have been bought and they'll just sign anything. But Muslims can't be bought. And this is what they fear because if you're cruel and unjust, yes, you, you should fear Allah or you should fear Allah's people. And that, that's the same as happened when the Prophet وسلم, was preaching Islam in Makkah al Muqarramah. They feared political mm -hmm. Islam. They feared because they, they knew they were unjust and they were cruel and they were doing all these sorts of things. And eventually when they accepted Islam, they realized this, they were they were wrong and the Prophet was right. So this is happening, this is happening all over again. And we just have to put, uh, uh, help the Ummah. To, to realize which direction they have to go in. And at the same time, invite the Western leaders to Islam mm -hmm. because ultimately they're going to live and die and they're going to be questioned. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the truth that they have to accept. Once they accept that, there's, there's no issue. If they reject mm -hmm. that and they're cruel and they're unjust as they are demonstrating, then yes, you know, let, mm -hmm. let's look how cruel and unjust they are. There, there's, there's weapons of mass destruction. They, they're willing to destroy the world to save their, their ideology. Mm -hmm. how, how, how much contradiction is there in that? If you, don't, if you try mm -hmm. and attack us, we'll destroy the world. Well, how, mm -hmm. how does that help your ideology? It doesn't, it destroys your ideology. That's how barbaric this thinking, how wrong this thinking is. So Islam offers, a, offers an alternative where Jews and Muslims can live side by side, where Muslims and non-Muslims can live mm -hmm. side by side. There's nothing to fear. But if you are unjust, there will be a reaction. If you are cruel, there will be a reaction. That is not religion. That is human nature. Okay? And, and it, it breeds prejudice, mm. and it breeds hatred, and it breeds terrorism. Mm. Whatever your narrative is. Yeah, no, it, 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 you're absolutely right. Um, but we can't fault you on anything that you have said. But coming back to the point of uh, leadership, um, you're one of the few um, uh, scholars who has actually spoken out. I think there's a couple, uh, uh, couple uh, others who have, but generally it, it, there's been a silence. When I think about organizations which work for peace, when you have interfaith organizations that are working for peace, and yet there's absolute silence. We have not heard a murmur from organization, major organizations to say this this is not acceptable anymore why do you think that um, people at that level are not speaking up because it's a genocide you know yes, it's a genocide it's absolute absolutely. genocide you know, two days ago i was sent a photograph of a three-year-old child and i've had nightmares so why isn't this making an impact on people that have the authority to make a difference. Do you know what? In on, on the one sense, you have to ask them why they are silent. But let, let me let me. I, say, have, I have tried. <laughs> let I me tell you what I think. It. Let me tell you what I think. There, there's a couple of reasons. One is, you know, when when we train our ulama, we don't train them in dunya enough. We just train them in the books. So they know the books. They know the fiqh. They know the maslas. They know all that. But to, to be a, an expert in dunya, you need like a, like a degree. You need a pol pol government and politics degree. You need to be aware of what's going on. You, you need to have a certain brain that's switched on. The Prophet said, Sallallahu 
or come aqal on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a very famous hadith. Everybody knows it. Okay. If you see an evil, you change it with the hands. If not, you change it, you, 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 you speak up against it with the tongue. If not, you have to, at least in your heart, know it's wrong. And that's the weakest of faith. And unfortunately, they're going, they're starting from the bottom, weakest of faith, <laughs> and they're thinking that's all right. No, it's not all right. You should raise your voice. And you should, if you don't know about politics, you should learn about it. It's not difficult. With social media, it's not difficult. And if you want to be called a, a, a Muslim, forget about a scholar. If you want to be called a Muslim, it's your duty as a Muslim. It's saying la ilaha illallah is not just a personal belief. It's a responsibility. And it's a responsibility will be questioned. You know, there's a very famous hadith where uh, Jibreel alayhi salam is told by Allah to destroy an entire population. And Jibreel alayhi salam says, Ya Allah, there is a man. He never misses his prayer. His prayer is always on time. And Allah says, destroy him as well. Because he's quiet. Mm -hmm. Everybody's committing haram. And he's mm -hmm. quiet. Why do you think the pandemic's happening? Why do you think all this is going on? Muslims are dying. Why? Allah is seeing, is watching. Allah, do you think Allah is ignoring everything? There comes a time Allah will say, this is it now. You, you, you've reached, you've gone beyond the boundary. You are, you've stopped enjoining good. You've stopped forbidding evil. What's, what's uh, haram has become halal now. And this is, this is one of the uh, reasons I would say we have this pandemic. It's a warning. And by the way, coronavirus just has to change a little bit. And then it becomes lethal. Uh, mm -hmm. SARS and Ebola are 30 to 50 percent death rates. Just, just change a little bit. If we don't wake up now, then we have only ourselves to blame. So it's a lack of iman. It's, it's a lack of understanding. And can I just also say, it's stupidity. It's stupidity. You, how dare you not speak up? If you're not speaking up, shame on you to call yourself a Muslim. Shame on you to, to, to start discussing about Islamic Sharia. This is basic Islamic Sharia. You see an evil and people think, oh, we have to do jihad. You know what? It, let me explain this hadith. You see someone being mugged on the street. You, you help that person. This is what, what's, mm -hmm. what's, what the hadith is talking about. You help that person. Change it with the hand. You don't watch them being slaughtered or killed or being mugged. And if, especially if you have got the authority and the capacity to help, if you have one that's different and just think, okay, I, I don't like it in my heart. No, there's something happening in front of you. Do it. You see someone starving. You just don't have it in your, you help them. You see refugees, you help them. This is our Muslim responsibility. Every single prophet that came, peace be upon the alayhi musalam, one thing they did, which they did uh, in terms of the biggest sunnah they did, was to help the sick and the needy. And I tell you what, if every Muslim just did that, just that, mm -hmm. or half the problems would go. <laughs> half the problems would go. Honestly, I'm not joking. Half the problems would go. Half the refugees would go. If we just did the, that charity work sincerely and as an ummah, as Muslim countries can do, and, and then people will re realize what Islam is all about. Islam, you know, nothing to fear uh, from Islam. Actually, Islam is good for the world. It's good for us, good for you. And people like Netanyahu and the Zionists will melt away. They'll just melt away. They say, we can't compete with this. <laughs> and it's true, they can't. So this is a problem. It's, it's, it's completely unacceptable that people are silent. And if you are silent, you'll be questioned. Because you're right, sister, they have that responsibility, that position. They call themselves leaders of the communities, leaders of this group or that group. And you're silent. Shame on you. And I'm warning you now, the Ummah will not forgive you. And Allah, you'll have to answer to them. You know, the fact that children are dying, um, you know, to, to watch um, videos of uh, sisters, mothers, you know, the last one that I saw and I said I actually had nightmares was a little girl, beautiful little girl, only three years of age, gone, absolutely gone. And we've gone back to work. Yeah. Ramadan is over. Eid yeah. is over. Uh, yeah. We've gone back into normality and they will continue suffering. What can an individual on the ground do? 
you know, we've been told to write letters to our MPs. So we've done that. Go on marches for peace. We've done that. Um, social media, bombard social media. We have done that. But we did that when the illegal war, you know, on Iraq took place. Do you think that we need a sort of a, what the Muslims need a structure, some sort of a platform which doesn't exist at the moment that can help us and guide us because we are scattered? Yes, yeah, sister, you're right. We need leadership. We need maturity. And we just need to have a direction. And everybody will give different views on, on what that solution is. And some people will say, you know, go go for fudge in the mosque and that, that will change the Ummah. You know, these are, to be honest, these are very, it's not a wrong statement, but it's a bit of a inconsistent and a bit bit weak statement that won't change you if you if you if you go for fajr it'll certainly help it's one of the solutions but it won't change what's happening on the ground we need activism mm -hmm. we need to make noises we need to make representations to our government and if our governments don't listen we need to change the leadership mm -hmm. okay that's what we need to do and we need to have a, a, a global, a global effort, a united effort, like a Muslim United Nations. Why, why, why hasn't that started? Why, why aren't we doing that? Why aren't Muslim countries working together economically? Well, the, the problem we've got is because, as I said, some of them their qibla is not towards uh, Makkah, and and that's a problem. And they they are the ones who are also pressing their population, and and you can see. When, when leaders hear something against them in certain countries, uh, the journalists even, they'll, they'll be killed. That, that's the way they control. So that's a situation, this situation we're in, we're in a very bad situation because we are bad and as a result, our leaders are bad. And when a good leader comes along, fine, you may not be perfect. You might be 50% doing something, but it's still 50%. So let's give them support and let's give our help and assistance however we can. But I come back to this, uh, these couple of things, charity and dawah, and a little bit of uh, making noise. And, and you mentioned some of the things, all these are important, but not just when these things happen in front of us, all these are important all the time. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, you know, if we do that in joining good forbidding evil, if we speak out against uh, uh, what's happening more and more, if, we, if we, everybody spoke out, there would be a difference. There would be a difference. How, how, you know, it's it seems like a catch twenty two situation. We've done this before when we had the you know the first intifada, the second intifada. We've done all this, and we seems to be repeating. I mean, it's like we we don't learn a lesson from history, but we seems to be repeating history for the sake of history. And this is this petrifies me that two weeks down the line it will be forgotten. The suffering will be there, but it will be so forgotten. What can we do to implore the international community to say, this isn't right? This just isn't right. I, th I think the international community knows that. It's not a question of us telling them. They know that. But let, let, me, let me be very blunt as to, uh, you know, people call this situation very complicated. I, I don't, I'm sure you've heard that from journalists from politics. It's a very complicated situation. No, it isn't actually. It's a very simple situation. Let me tell you how uh, this conflict can be, it's not really conflict, this um, genocide and this subjugation, this oppression. Let me tell you how this can be solved. It just needs one courageous American president. Just, just one. I'll, I'll give you my, my reasoning and my, my evidence. Mm -hmm. Because Israel receives $10 million per day in charity from the United States. 10 million per day. So effectively, America is paying for the salaries of the politicians, salaries of the soldiers, all the military equipment is free, basically. Okay. Now, all they have to do is say, right, this is what you're going to do, Netanyahu. If you don't do it, I'm going to withhold your money. This has happened, actually. It's happened before. Okay. So as soon as you say that as president, right, Netanyahu will fly over to Washington with a begging bowl and say, I'm sorry, what would you like me to do? And he'll, he'll, he'll do it for the money. Okay, this, this, is, this is why Israel exists, to be honest. George Bush Sr. did this. It, I think it was Yitzhak Shamir, I think. 
George Bush Sr. did this. He withheld, he withheld $10 billion dollars for 120 days. Mm. And Yitzhak flew over straight away. And Bush Sr. forced him to sign the, I think it was a Madrid peace, peace deal. He forced him to sign it. Right? But he wasn't elected after that because he lost, he lost the next election to Bill Clinton. And that's a problem. And, and Bush Sr. admitted, he goes, when I, when I made this statement that I'm against your settlements, I'm going to withhold your money for a short time. He said, I had a thousand lobbyists against me. Mm. It was me against a thousand lobbyists. Mm. And that's a problem with American presidents. They haven't got the guts to mm. do anything because they, they're going to get the hassle. They, they, they want their seat. They want their power. I understand that. I understand that the Americans and the British and the Western countries, but what is holding the 50 or so Muslim states? I understand that they're fighting, that they might lose the chair, they might lose the power, but are you telling me there's not a single leader in the Muslim world today, not a single one, that I can say, I think he might be okay. I think he might be able to do something. I, I think a few of them can do something. All they have to do is have the courage to unite a little bit. And once they unite a little bit, they can do something. It might be diplomatic. It might be uh, charity. It might be a number of things. It might even be military. I, I doubt that will go down that path. That's all they have to do. Okay. Um, the, the world runs with money and with goodwill. And the Muslim countries, unfortunately, the leaders are just flowing along with the, with the non-Muslims. Whichever direction they want to go in, that's fine, because uh, of, of their love for dunya. So there are, there are things happening, but it's more noise than action. Mm -hmm. And I think once they realize they've actually got quite a senior, a good position, they've got power, they've got authority, they've got support, they can do a bit more. That's all they have to do. And if they're worried about losing their position, so what? They have to answer to Allah. And that's a problem. Oh, no. Let me do what I can. Make sure make sure United States isn't too upset with me. And I'm sorry. There'll come a time you'll have to make them upset. Now's the time. Now's the time. Because as a leader, you know, as Umar, he, he, after he passed away, he came to one of his relatives in a dream. And the relative said, Ya Umar, how is your situation? And Sayyidina Umar, he said, my judgment in my grave has just finished. That was 10 years after he passed away. He said, I was asked about every decision I've made as a leader. And unless you feel, feel this responsibility as a Muslim leader, you'll get nowhere. You'll get nowhere. Yeah, you know, leaders have done some very good things, some of them, like set up hospitals and help the population but the the ummah is also your population mm -hmm. and they also need your help and i tell you what raising you're raising a few voices together as muslims mm -hmm. that'll be that'll be a shock why why can't you do that why can't you off, offer something why can't you uh, and it's not difficult but they 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 just haven't got the courage they haven't got the uh, tawfiq, they haven't got, seem, don't seem to have the ability. And that's why it's a shame. It's a shame on them, it's a shame on us.
think that a, t- a bottom-down theory can work because what I'm hearing is that the top-down is not going to work because they are afraid to lose the power, the prestige, and the kursi. So could the people, you know, from the bottom up, could we do something that can actually make these people say, okay, I think we need to do something? Absolutely. With a coordinated effort, uh, the, the, from the, the masses can, can change the government and change their minds. Absolutely right. And, and that just needs a bit of maturity, a little bit of iman, a little bit of leadership, and a little bit of sincerity. Put them all together and the leaders will listen. Especially in, in Muslim democracies, there are a few, especially in Muslim democracies. Uh, and you don't need resources, you, you just need, um, I mean, there was one leader, one of the ulama, he said, look, I've got 500,000 people ready to, yes, to I read that. walk, yeah, yeah, to walk yeah. into Palestine. Yeah. yeah. He, and he's not joking. No, no. He's not I... joking. But so pe- people are ready, but uh, unfortunately the leaders aren't ready. And as I said, there's nothing to fear. If you're just, if you're unjust, yes, you have something to fear. It may not be from us, but ultimately Allah's watching, Allah will sort, sort things out. And that pandemic is just one, one example. Mm-hmm. Uh, every, every single cry of every single child, Allah's listening to. Mm-hmm. Every single drop of innocent blood, Allah's witnessing, Allah's watching. And do you know what? If they don't see it in dunya, oh my goodness, in the hereafter, you know, they, they, they are in serious, serious trouble. But we have now our duty in dunya to do what we can. And making a noise is one thing, but it's up to governments to, to take the next step. Just making a representation, just calling Biden, what the hell are you doing? Shame, what, you know, why can't someone say that to him? What's wrong? He, he's not a, an evil man. He, he's just behaving like he, he, he thinks he should be behaving because of the, the lobby, for example. And, and as I said, uh, this story about uh, just George Bush Senior is actually it's not from myself. It's actually one of the Jewish publications, mm-hmm. Israeli publications. They mm-hmm. they've given the whole history. So yeah, there, there there is these things we can do, but nobody's doing them. So the people with influence to have the knowledge and they should make the representations and persuade. Come on, just say this, do this. The whole country is with you. We're with you. And once you give them a bit, a bit of courage and they have their imam, then, then alhamdulillah. It's like um, the Turkish uh, prime minister. Um, you know, for the first time he's making, uh, a Muslim country is making decent Muslim programs mm. and inspiring the youngsters. Why wasn't that done 30, 40 years ago? We, we've let Hollywood and Bollywood influence people's mentality. He's, he's restoring all the mosques. He's, he's giving great imams. He's teaching Islamic uh, theology in schools to the children. You know, why, why wasn't this done 20, 30 years ago? If you want to change, you have to think generations ahead. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is, again, this hasn't happened. And people have, uh, people have destroyed the purity of Islam with, with their false teachings uh, and buying, buying scholars like like they've done they dream trying to do in the uk you I know mean, that's one reason why they're quiet <laughs> some of them get the salary some of them get the salary from the uk government okay mm-hmm. and in france they, mm-hmm. they, they they've done one step better the, the organization representing the muslims is paid completely by the french government mm-hmm. so this is this is how they're controlling the muslims and, it, and it's wrong but the reason they fear islam is because they are corrupt themselves they're morally corrupt financially corrupt, and spiritually corrupt. And if you have a decent Muslim, they'll speak up, sorry, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. You know, it's it's quite refreshing to hear uh, you speak. Um, do you personally get, um, you know, is there retaliation from people to say, well, you know, as... As a scholar, you can't get involved in politics. This is a political situation. And um, your job is to sit in a mosque, for goodness sake. 
I, I don't sit in the mosque. I, 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 if, if a mosque wants me to come and help and assist and do the imamat, I'm happy to do that. I can't do it on a full-time basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, even when I give a speech in the mosque, the committee says, please don't talk about politics. <laughs> I said that, I said that, this way, uh, the separation uh, of uh, you know of, uh, religion and daily life. Um, yeah, and and it's wrong, and and that's that's a wrong mentality. Look, as I said, you know, there's a way of speaking to politicians, and there's a way of speaking without compromising your religion. Mm -hmm. And we are here. Look, we're in this country. We're not here to destroy this country. We're here to guide this country and help this country and and make it a better place to live. Okay, we're we're not we're not here to destroy anyone or anything. The Prophet وسلم, didn't do da'wah to destroy people. He didn't give da'wah because he goes, I'm bringing you good news. I'm bringing you something good for yourselves mm -hmm. and good for your communities. And the non-Muslims were looked after in, in a Muslim society. They were looked after in a very beautiful way, a very lovely way. And as a result, many, many of them turned to Islam. So Islam, uh, non-Muslims have nothing to fear. But, but the narrative against the Muslims is so strong that they, they, they fear it. Mm -hmm. I, I was once, I had an interview once, um, Nick Ferrari, that's his name. Mm -hmm. And his, his issue with, as he said, Islamic Sharia, as he said, yes. <laughs> his, his issue with Islamic Sharia was he said, uh, you, you, you're trying to stop me drinking my beer. That was mm -hmm. his issue. I thought, crikey, is that, is that <laughs> the issue? Is that, is that the issue? I, I said to him, Nick, if that's your issue, look, when you be, if you become a Muslim, you wouldn't want to drink your beer. You wouldn't mm. want to drink it. Mm. It's like someone recently when, when, when they were asked, uh, are you worried about the virus anymore? Mm. He said, no, no, now the pubs are open. I don't care anymore. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the choice of dunya mm. and the, the worshipping of desires, this is what dunya is all about. And the Quran warns us against this. You know, mm. you're worshipping your desires. You're going to end up just depressed and upset with no structure and just living like, like cattle every day. You eat the grass, you get milk, you eat the grass, you get milk, you die. Is that the sort of life you really want? What about the akhirah? What about the hereafter? And if, if you're saying to me, oh, it, it doesn't exist, that's a big risk you're taking. Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't exist, fine. I mm -hmm. think I've lived a good life, alhamdulillah. You've mm -hmm. worshipped your desires, that's fine. We're both dead, it's finished. But if it does exist, then I, I might have a chance, but you've got a big problem. So surely you should find out now if it does exist. Convince yourself. Do the investigations, but don't don't put your life at risk. And and coming back to the the the, the problem, if Muslims aren't feeling what's going on is wrong, you know I've seen the videos. I've seen a, a soldier strangle a child for heaven's sake. Yes. Look how much look how much uh, how much happened in the United States after that after mm -hmm. policemen. A kid killed a man by leaning on his neck. And now mm -hmm. someone's done this, a Zionist has done this. No, there's no reaction. There there's no reaction. Yes. Yeah. So that's no a, that's reaction. absolute, absolute disgrace. Mm -hmm. So we, we should realize this is this is a reaction. We should make people realize, make the noise, make representations, mm -hmm. and and the, the working from the mass roots upwards, if that's the only solution, then that's that's the only solution. Again, nothing to fear. Nothing to fear from Islam. We're just here to do good. Mm. We're not here to destroy anyone. But if someone is killing people, mm. if someone is destroying a population, if someone is committing genocide, the whole world has to take part and stop that. Mm. And if a country is supporting them, then the whole world has to object. Mm. If the Muslim countries, just some of them, boycotted economically the United States, they'll, they'll feel it. Mm. Don't feel it. Yeah, you've talked about leadership, you've talked about Iman, you've talked about the love for dunya, you've talked about hadith. But if someone does not have the understanding of any of that, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say that, but we have even Muslims who do not understand. Is not having enough knowledge our problem? No, understanding. no, no, no. A, a human being has a natural ability to distinguish between right and wrong. A human ability has a natural understanding of what's just and unjust. 
And that comes from childhood. If you tell a child off for something they haven't done, they will tell you, they'll shout and scream and object because they say, no, it's not, you're wrong, I didn't do it. And, and they won't stop until they try and convince you. It's a natural thing we have. And it's only our baggage and ignorance and our deprivation and our uh, uh, um, lack of willing to do anything that gives our minds excuses. Oh, no, no, this is, the, let's not worry about this. No, that's, not, that's good, not good enough. Everybody can see what's wrong. I mean, look at the, the football fans. When uh, the, I think it was Celtic, when the, yeah, when, when, when the Celtic uh, uh, leadership said, uh, please don't bring Palestinian flags into the stadium, they all brought them in. <laughs> they all brought them in. And then the Leicester City won the FA Cup. Yes. They, they showed the Palestinian flag. Everybody can see it's wrong. Mm. And the narrative that's coming out of the Zionists, everybody knows it's wrong. Okay. But the, 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 the problem we've got is the, 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 the governments, the governments are pushing their own haram and false narrative. Mm -hmm. And they're focusing on, you know, other things and then calling Hamas all sorts of names and focusing mm -hmm. on the retaliation, not the, uh, the subjugation, not the oppression, not the murder, not the genocide. And, and, and that's the problem. And, and people aren't stupid. I, I was listening to a radio program and most people who phoned in about what's happening is, uh, the question was, is a Palestinian life worth less than an Israeli life? Mm -hmm. That was the question. Most people who phoned in objecting to Netanyahu and what he was doing were non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. They were non-Muslims, yeah. And, every, and they were absolutely angry. They were horrified. They were criticizing. They were condemning. And they're saying, what is going on? How are you letting this happen? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reality. So everybody has a sense of justice. You don't need knowledge. You just need your eyes. You just need your brain on. And that's why a couple of Air Force pilots as well uh, from the IDF, mm -hmm. they've, uh, they're on now on, on uh, social media. And they're saying, yeah, our country is misbehaving. Mm -hmm. I, I refuse to fly the planes and I'm speaking out against it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're on because Zionism is not, uh, is not Judaism, actually. Mm. Uh, Zionism yes. seems to be taken over. Jude it's not. It's wrong. It's an extremist. Uh, it's almost like the, I don't want to say ISIS, but it's almost that sort of <laughs> equivalent, I suppose. Mm. You can maybe understand it like that. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah. this is what we have to do. You, we can't keep silent. We can't keep inactive. We have to spend our lives now doing something to change the situation. If everybody does it, if everybody does it, there will be an impact. But if we just sit and think it's wrong and nobody does anything, then things will just, things will carry on. It seems like that the innate, the good innateness that we have seems to be covered by something which is very ugly, which is not allowing us to speak. Um, because that, that's, you're right that there are many, many non-Muslims who have stood up and who have made comments. There have been politicians, there have been MPs, yeah. and I would yeah. say there have been non-Muslim MPs. Yeah. Um, and generally, I absolutely, but it's this, this, you know, sorry state of the Muslim Ummah at the moment. It's a really sorry state. It, it, is, leadership. Uh, it is. It is. Well, this. There's no leadership effectively. There is a sort of a quasi-leadership, but there's no proper leadership. So we have to ask ourselves at the end of every day, what have we done to benefit the Ummah and what are we going to do tomorrow? And if the answer is I haven't done much, I haven't done enough, then change, do more. There are, there are look, there are 2 billion Muslims in this world. That's not a small number. Mm. It just needs sincerity, Iman, it needs work to start, it needs a little bit of... Uh, reducing your ego, <laughs> reducing your pride. It needs more followers and leaders, right? And and inshallah, we'll, we will see, we can see a change. Mm. And, and and that's on all of us. And at the end of the day, I mean, when fitna happens, and this fitna going on, there was one companion and the Prophet ﷺ, he was explaining what will happen, mm. you know, after a generation after me. Mm. And the companion was very worried. He said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as you know, two of the Lifas were actually um, uh, shaheed as well because of this fitna. 
He said, what should I do in those times? Which, whose, sh- whose side shall I take? Mm. And the Prophet said, وسلم, go in your house, close the door. That's fitna. Fitna is worse than death in the Quran. There's a verse that says that. Mm. So this is, a, this is what, what we're in. So there's a couple of things we should do. One is we should uh, nara, save yourselves and your families from the fire. That's one thing. And the other thing, work for the ummah, whatever little work you can do, whatever's in your power, make representations, make a noise, whatever you can do. You know, uh, we haven't written enough letters to the MPs. We haven't written mm-hmm. enough letters to the prime minister. We haven't got enough signatures for, the, for this. Mm-hmm. And, and that's another problem. The little bit we're doing is not enough. And when some people say, you know, we need leadership, we need, yeah, we need all of these things. But all of these things don't happen like that, right? And, and there's so many issues as well around all this as well, which we're not even addressing. Our immaturity, our stupidity, our ignorance, our quietness, all this. And that's not enough. So we have to become our own representative and leader. And, and, and who, how many Muslims have sat with their MPs? You know, when I was young and Libya was bombed, the mosque called the MP. And the MP was so moved, so moved, because some of the kids started crying mm-hmm. when they were saying, because uh, the planes were the F-111s bombing, uh, bombing mm-hmm. Libya. So I remember that because the way the child was saying it, and the child started crying. How can you do this to our brothers and sisters? He was saying, the MP was, yeah, he was so moved. He goes, do you know what? I'm going to speak to Prime Minister myself. Mm. You know, if enough MPs did that, Prime Minister would realise. But we're not we're not even doing that. We, 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 where's our lobbying gone? You know, I, I know it's not a, a good thing to rely on MPs, but there are a number of Muslim MPs. We should be lobbying <laughs> them. Yeah. They're well, doing, have... yeah, they're not doing enough. Mm. And, and sometimes these Muslim MPs make such a good speech about racism, about Islam, mm. they do. They should, they should do it on all the Muslim issues. And this is a big Muslim issue at the moment. Why can't they just get together, have a cross-party agreement, mm-hmm. and as, as non-Muslim MPs have on issues, they have cross-party agreements. Why can't they do that? You see, so there's a, there's a few things. They're very weak things, but at least it's something better than nothing. Mm-hmm. And, and when people criticise me, oh, we, we don't want that. Well, hang on, what, what do you suggest then? Mm-hmm. We haven't got... We haven't got 20 million followers. We haven't got the media with us. We haven't got, what have we got? So we do what we can. And, and at least we do the maximum to our, to our benefit, the maximum to our ability. And, and at least we should do that. Not the minimum or not zero. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I, was, I was just, when you were talking, I was just thinking that could this have happened Pre nineteen twenty three, could 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 um, a place like Gaza, if it had existed in those days, have been bombed? Pre nineteen twenty three, and would the Muslim Ummah would have kept quiet, and was the Muslim leadership would have kept quiet? Well, the, the, that's when the Khilafah more or less ended around that time with the Khalifa and with, you know, Muslim armies. No, they, they wouldn't have let this happen. They so, wouldn't have let this absolutely right. But to so, get back to that is not going to happen overnight. No, and again, no. this, is what, this is what non-Muslims fear. They fear political Islam mm. because political Islam used to dominate mm. and they want to dominate. So that, I mean, that's what it's all about. Mm. Domination, either it's democracy against communism or you know, something against someone else or Christians against Muslims. You know, this is the egos that human beings have. And it's got to the stage with democracies against communism, it got to the stage, they're, they're willing to blow each other up. That's how mad this system is. But you're right, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened. The, the leaders then did not compromise. And the leaders then were very good practicing Muslims. Very and their 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 leadership position was nothing compared to the the love of the ummah they had mm. and the service of the ummah they had and because the Khulafai Rashidun, uh, you know, this is what they put as priority. There was once Hazrat Umar, he was walking around uh, 
the uh, I think it was uh, Medina to the He's walking around and he heard some children crying. And he went to see and he saw a woman boiling some water. Mm. And she said, why, why are your children crying? Mm. Aren't you feeding them? Mm. She goes, I'm, I'm, pretend, I'm pretending to cook because mm. I haven't got the food. This mm. Omar, she said, this Omar, where is he? <laughs> Told you to Omar. Yeah, he, she's so upset. He, mm. he himself goes, he picks up the flower and he takes it to her. She's so mm. grateful. She goes, you are better than Omar. You should be Khalifa. This is this is what we need. This compassion, this iman, this uh, you know, mm. worry for the ummah, and and we have that little bit, but we need to have it more, and our leaders need to have it more. And and you know, uh, the people are worried about khilafa and khalifa. They're worried about that, but they shouldn't, unless mm. they're being unjust, unless they're being cruel. And I think that's the problem. They're being unjust. They're being cruel. But a, a, a khalifa. A, a system of leadership in Islam is a very just leadership, very beautiful leadership. They will look after the whole world. Mm. Mm. They will, they'll eliminate poverty from the United States. Mm. They'll say, we're here to help. They'll not say, we're here to fight. We're here to help you. Mm. We'll, we'll, look, we'll open up uh, shelters all over the United States, all over Europe. We're going to look after all the poor. That's, that's what Khilaf khil- khil- is all about. People don't realize. Uh, people think it's a political domination. No, it's not political domination. It's actually helping the, the, the humanity. That's what it's all about. Well, it certainly would help us. You know, we're the sixth richest nation on the planet. But a couple of years ago, I believe, we had 500 people who died on our streets because they were homeless. So um, it makes me wonder, um, maybe that's the route that we need to take. Um, yeah. Uh, you see, I, I when I was running a mosque many many years ago, um, I I said we want five imams, and they said why? I said I want one imam to go to all the hospitals looking after the patients, mm-hmm. I want one imam to go to the schools and the prisons, you know, to give dawah and to help people, I want one one imam to go door to door and help the poor in the street, I want one imam to to do their five times prayer in the mosque, I want one imam to work on the internet was coming in then to work on the internet on answer people's questions i think that's five right mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm speaking to people and looking at me horrified because what you're talking about and and I'm, I'm sorry to say this they, they said to me and i'm going to use the accent they say to me you want to hire your friend <laughs> sorry <laughs> i shouldn't laugh <laughs> that's what was said to me mm-hmm. you want to hire your friend i said I, you hire your friends. I don't want to hire my... I just want the dawah work to be done. That's what Moshe should be doing. I said, we actually were sitting on a quarter of a million pounds at that point. You know, that's how much how rich the mosque was. I said, what are you doing with this money? Let's open up a women's shelter. Let's open up an orphanage. Let's, oh, yeah, let's help the com- yes, help the community. Let's work with the church next door. That's what mm-hmm. Islam is all about. And it just fell on deaf ears. Now Muslims are working in the mosques. But you're right. Mm-hmm. Which prophet would walk past a homeless person and ignore them? No, they wouldn't. We're failing. We failed in this fundamental duty. We, if we can't solve the local problems, forget about the world problems. Sheikh, it's been an absolute honor to have you on Community Platform. Um, as you have said, We can't stop. We have to keep talking. We have to keep raising our voices. We didn't, you know, what is uh, uh, allowed in our Sharia, as a very African saying goes, that every drop washes the stone. Um, And I'm sorry you didn't get your five imams, but I'd be quite happy to provide you with double that volunteers for the work Mashallah. there's always work to be done there's always good work to be done absolutely Mashallah. absolutely Mashallah. i'm very grateful to you for your time that you have given us um and inshallah i hope to catch up with you soon um i do follow you quite regularly on social media Mashallah. and uh, so keep writing don't stop Keep writing. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. Allah bless you. Make dua for us, inshallah. Let's make dua for the Ummah as well, inshallah. And you too, sir. Allah bless them and look after them. I'd like to say a big thank you to the audience for uh, watching. And uh, I hope that uh, we will get back to live programs when you can 
uh, submit your questions. Until then, um, take care of yourself, look after yourself, y- you and your neighbor. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum.